Thank you. Colleagues, gives me great pleasure to introduce our next speaker, which is Graham Smith, who's the General Secretary of the STUC. Graham. Thank you very much, Derek, and thank you for giving me the opportunity to be here today to convey my personal support for the action that you're taking, not just to defend your jobs, your pay and your pensions, but to defend the public services, the public services that you provide to us, the general public. And I also want to thank you for giving me the opportunity to convey the support and solidarity of the STUC General Council and the wider Scottish trade union movement. Colleagues, I want to make three points this afternoon. The first is this. I will not apologise and no worker should apologise if they have a final salary pension scheme and if they, if they can retire before they're 65. Now unlike Sir Fred Goodwin and the likes, these rights didn't come about as a result of the generosity of employers. They were won through years of union organisation and collective bargaining. And we shouldn't apologise for that. We should celebrate these rights and we should not allow them to be taken away and we should ensure that they're secured for all workers. Now secondly, the Prime Minister says that the so-called gold-plated pensions enjoyed by public sector workers are not fair on the taxpayer. Now what's not fair on the taxpayer are the massive cuts in public spending, the attacks on the welfare state and the wasted billions on tridents and on fighting wars. What's not fair on the taxpayer is the fact that we paid 18% more last year to fund the lavish lifestyle of Prince Charles. What's not fair on the taxpayer is to deny us high quality public services by denying public service workers a decent pay, decent pay and a decent pension. And what's not fair on the taxpayer is the deceit that's been played out on us by politicians over the last 30 years that we can have Scandinavian style public services and only pay US levels of taxation. And I'll tell you, what's really not fair on us taxpayers is that we pay our taxes unlike those big corporations and rich individuals who employ accountants to find ways that they can avoid paying their taxes to the tune of a bill, billions of pounds every year. Now these attacks on public sector pensions are of course a cash grab to fund a deficit that was caused by the bank, greedy bank bosses and financial speculators and the politicians that let them get away with it. But they're also intended to force down the incomes of workers in work and in retirement, not just in the public sector, but in the private sector too. And my final point is this. We've heard threats from condemned ministers about further anti-trade union laws if public sector workers continue to take action over their pensions. But they've said that they need to act to stop unions destroying the economy. Well, it shouldn't really need me to point out that it wasn't the unions that caused the economic crisis that we're in. If they want to act against those destroying the economy, they should probably properly regulate the banks and stop the obscene bonuses paid to senior bankers. In fact, the biggest threat to our economy are the policies of this condemned government, not the trade union movement. Now let's change the laws on strike ballots. Let's have voting in the workplace. Let's have voting online as well as postal voting. Let's make it easier for workers to vote on industrial action rather than put up an artificial thresholds. Union members should be treated no differently from our elected politicians. And how many of them were elected with the support of more than 50% of those eligible to vote? <laughs> Colleagues, we'll not be cowed, we won't be bullied, and we won't be intimidated by their sabre rattling. What is right is right, what is just is just, and more anti-trade union laws won't change that. Now today you're striking for what is right and what is just, and in that you have my full support. And if over the coming months you're joined by other union members striking to defend their jobs, their pay, their pensions and public services, you'll continue to have my support and the STUC support. Thank you very much indeed.